Hi YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on how to replace the internal battery of your iPhone 4S. Now before we can go ahead and replace the battery inside of our iPhone 4S, there's a few extra items that I recommend you have on hand before taking things apart. And that's to have a bottle of rubbing alcohol, a Q-tip, a can of compressed air, right, a cleaning cloth with some glass cleaner if you want. And more importantly is that when you actually order the battery replacement kit from either iFixit or your preferred battery supplier, so to speak, that you ensure that you get this thing called a liberation kit, which is basically going to uh, include two Phillips head screws, double Phillips, double zero head screws, to replace the proprietary pentalobe screws that are on the bottom of the iPhone. So we can start by taking our pentalobe driver bit which has kind of got this funky, sort of five-sided, almost Torx-looking type head. And we're going to go ahead and remove the screws by the dock connector port. Now, so once you remove both screws here, we can go ahead and remove the back cover by sliding the back of the iPhone vertically up just a little bit, and then very carefully using our spudger tool to pry this back cover off. Right. and then just carefully lift this up and remove it. Now here's a close-up view of the inside of our iPhone 4S and so it's pretty clear here that the lithium-ion battery is located here and basically to remove this we need to actually undo these two Phillips screws that are holding the battery strap to the phone's logic board. Now before we actually do any dismantling I actually want to point out three key things here um, that the iFixit video actually kind of misses out, sort of, um, is that we need to make sure that when you're removing the screws that we pay attention to the orientation uh, and the awareness of the fact that there's a ground strap um, that exists here. And what this little ground springy strap DD is, it's not really a strap, it's a spring actually, um, it actually makes uh, contact with the back of the iPhone 4S's case and that's to um, create a continuity and ground and RF shielding so that the cell phone and the Wi-Fi works properly. I've actually seen people forget to install this little grounding spring and then uh, in fact if it's missing your cell service uh, doesn't work altogether. It actually says no signal. The other thing here um, that iFixit video doesn't clearly explain is that the two screws that are holding the battery connector to the logic board are actually in fact two different lengths. So there's a shorter 1.5 millimeter long screw on the top and on the bottom, it's a slightly longer 1.7 millimeter screw. Uh, both of them are double zero Phillips. So the lower screw, longer screw, upper screw, shorter screw. Now, once we've removed that, we can carefully take our spudger tool and just gently pry up on this silver cover here, which is really the battery connector. like that and then just peel that back. Now pay attention here again to this little grounding spring that resides between the silver plate we just undid and the logic board. You can see that's what it looks like. Now on the logic board here again the iFixit video doesn't actually explain very well the extreme degree of diff, uh, delicate uh, nature of the cellular phone antenna uh, little s sort of snap connector here on the logic board that's literally right beside the upper battery uh, cable connector screw. They're only held in with to four tiny microscopic particles of solder so never under any circumstances when you're disconnecting this battery connector should you ever come near this little gold colored connector. If you pry that off chances are you've destroyed your cell phone. Using our little spudger tool we can go ahead and pry out our old battery by just placing your tool along the right hand side of the aluminum bezel and not on this side where the logic board is carefully just pry the battery out and releasing it from the adhesive glue. The reason why you don't want to pry against this side is that um, again 
And like what I had said earlier about the delicate contacts, the logic board itself is very fine and any type of flexing on the board could damage the phone. Let's remove the battery. The phone like Reinstall our battery. We literally do it in the exact reverse order by just carefully dropping our new battery into the battery area, making sure that our ribbon cable here is not uh, being pinched too badly. And then before we actually press this battery connector onto the logic board, we're gonna go ahead and take our little sort of spring ground connector here. And I'm just gonna bend up the little end point with my fingers, just a tiny amount just enough so that it gives it a little bit more springiness. And it's really important that we use some rubbing alcohol here and just get our, dampen our Q-tip just a little bit and making sure that we clean this little sort of threaded area contact here, upper battery connecting screw hole with rubbing alcohol and then cleaning the bottom grounding spring with rubbing alcohol as any type of finger or body oils can actually hinder the conductivity of this little spring and then we're just gonna have to kind of mess around here with placing this little grounding strap or spring back into place a close-up view here of our little grounding spring just being realigned with the screw hole and then from there, we can carefully, again, just rub the back side of our little battery connector screw hole with some alcohol. And we can very gently just realign that connector back on the logic board. You should never have to press very hard on that battery connector. You don't want to damage your logic board. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have these two microscopic screws that we had removed from our logic board, and one is slightly longer. 1.7 millimeters long goes on the lower. Screwing on like this. And then the short upper will pass through our little battery cover, our connector cover, and then through the little grounding spring. If you want, you can just use your little screwdriver to line it up as if, like how it was when we removed it. And then just finger tightening the screws. They don't need to be torqued down like crazy. Remember, these are tiny screws. And taking our alcohol covered Q-tip, we're gonna go ahead and clean the top of the grounding spring area. And then making sure that we also take our alcohol swab and clean the general area where that spring contacts. Now before we place the rear cover back onto our iPhone, we can take our compressed air here and then we're just going to give the camera a quick squirt um, with just a little bit of air. Just to make sure that there's no dust on that lens and then also doing the same for the back cover. Reinstall the two bottom screws in your iPhone. Now I mentioned earlier that I bought this repair kit with what they iFixit calls a liberation kit, which basically deletes the need to use pencil load screws and instead uses plain run of the mill Phillips screws. Using our double zero Phillips screwdriver bit, very carefully reinstall the screws. We're going to go ahead and turn our phone back on and um, most of the batteries I've replaced do have a charge from the factory but more importantly I actually want to turn on the phone here to make sure that my cellular and my Wi-Fi is actually functioning correctly and so um, I've actually seen people do repairs and you can see it turning on so there's a charge that um, if they don't install that spring clip properly 
um, and clean it with rubbing alcohol that they will have no cellular signal because there's just interference or whatever grounding issues uh, that exist that's causing your signal not to work. So now that the battery has been installed, I booted up the phone, you can see here that there's 56% charge from the factory and that there's no SIM, um, that, but I actually do have Wi-Fi, so that indicates to me that my grounding spring is making proper contact with the back of my iPhone uh, cover. So as you can see here for about probably $35 after shipping and everything that the iFixit battery will now give me a good solid two and a half to three years of like factory new performance. And on my other iPhones where I've done this actual battery replacement upgrade, I can tell you it makes a world of difference. And even when I'm using my phone, it doesn't get nearly as hot on new batteries as it did with the old one. And that's usually a sign that when your phone gets really warm that the old battery is just worn out. So, um, that's a real cheap fix and it's certainly a lot better than taking it to Apple and paying them the $140 battery swap program where they give you a new or a refurbished iPhone. Just remember guys that when you install this battery to give it a full charge so it's 100% uh, before your first use. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment and subscribe.